Hello again, everybody. Uh, this is Paul Gerald once again with Groundhopper Soccer Guides and EnglishSoccerGuide.com. Uh, coming out with my second video here. Uh, I'm just trying to get the hang of all of this stuff. So, uh, got a whole YouTube channel that you can check out, which actually, I guess you are checking it out if you're watching this video right now. So, uh, one of the things you'll see if you start uh, poking around in my uh, YouTube video, you'll see you know, pre-game uh, videos, just kind of get a sense of what a stadium is like, uh, some singing. Uh, when I enjoy a particular uh, song, I'll try to get a video of it. Uh, one of my favorite categories of videos is the crowd reaction video. Uh, what I try to do whenever I have any control over where I sit at a game, and I really encourage you to do this too, uh, try to sit with a good view of the away fans. Uh, they uh, supply a lot of the entertainment uh, at a game. Uh, they generally sing the whole time unless their team is just getting trampled. Uh, and uh, for us Americans anyway, it's really kind of one of the things that we enjoy about going to games over there because a lot of American sports, just about all of them really, other than college football, uh, there's just not many away fans. Uh, there might be a few scattered around here and there, but you're not going to have like a whole corner or end of the stadium filled with away fans going completely crazy. And in England, that's what you have most of the time. And uh, so if you can get a chance to uh, especially go to a game where there's going to be a lot of away fans, that's one of the ways I pick a game to go to. Uh, try to get to a rivalry game. Try to get to uh, a game where the away fans are, I mean, the away team is not too far away, um, et cetera. So, and also some clubs, like there's a couple of clubs that put the away fans way up in the top, like Newcastle, Sunderland. Um, I think those are the main two that come to mind. Like you can hardly even see the away fans, but uh, most of the time they're right down on a corner behind a goal. So try to get a good seat where you can see them and uh, it helps you to understand what they're singing. Um, you get a kind of a sense of the banter uh, around the edges of their section. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And in my case, uh, what I also try to do is uh, yeah, if they're going to be attacking the goal in front of their fans, uh, keep an eye out, uh, take a video in case something happens. Uh, so as such, I wind up with a lot of eight or nine second uh, corner kick videos where at the end of it, everybody goes, oh, so that's not what I'm going to show you today. I could put together an amazing montage of eight second pointless corner kick videos. Uh, but occasionally one goes in and it's in front of the away fans and they go berserk. So here are my five favorite crowd reaction videos. Um, almost all of them, actually all of these involve away fans as it turns out. So uh, five favorite, not ranked by the way, just for the record. I don't want to hear from people saying, hey, our video should have been higher ranked. So it's not number five to number one. It's just five of them. So uh, the first one is uh, the actual first one uh, that I got and where I kind of got the whole idea for this thing uh, because I just stumbled into this situation where in about 2014, uh, the League Cup semifinals, uh, Sunderland, who were then still in the Premier League, uh, drew Manchester United in the semifinals. Uh, winner goes to Wembley uh, to play for the League Cup uh, championship. So uh, or to play for the League Cup. So... First game had been at Sunderland, which they won 2-1. to one. Uh, Second game at Old Trafford, the Great Palace, the Theater of Dreams, they call it. Um, it was uh, one to nothing United at the end of regular time, so we go to extra time. Now, another thing to understand about cup games is, like, normally if Sunderland played at United in a league game, they would get 2,500, 3,000 tickets, and they'd be sitting over in the corner. When it's a cup game, you get up to three times that. Uh, so uh, instead of a couple of thousand Sunderland fans over in the corner, there were 9,000 Sunderland fans. So they took over that usual corner and then the whole upper end of what's called the scoreboard end uh, at uh, Old Trafford. So you got the Stratford end with the Rowdy United supporters. Scoreboard end is the other one. And uh, in this particular case, there was a bunch of Mackums up there raising a bunch of hell. So uh, it's in extra time. It's 2-2 two to two on aggregate. It's 118th, 119th minute. I've got a really good seat with a good view of the away fans. Got my video camera, and I thought, well, why wouldn't I just film the last minute or so of the game to see what happens? Well, here's what happened. And by the way, right before the shot goes, uh, goes, you know, um, or just as it happens, you know, uh, what happened is the guy takes a shot, and David De Gea spilled it. Okay. Uh, and you can hear a woman, if you listen really carefully, you can hear her go, no, 
no. And then all you can hear is 9,000 Mackums going a little crazy. That video, when I put that up, uh, really like later that night or the next day, uh, just blew up among the Sunderland fans. I still have friends up in Sunderland uh, because of that video. Uh, that's been kind of a common theme, uh, even more so on a video I'll tell you about in a minute. But um, yeah, as it turns out, by the way, Manchester United scored again uh, in like the 120th minute, uh, causing the whole thing to go to penalty kicks. And some of you might remember this penalty kicks. Um, Sunderland eventually won it uh, because between the two teams, they missed, I think, seven out of ten penalty kicks. It was the worst penalty shootout of all time. But it also occurred in front of those 9,000 Sunderland fans. So tell them it was terrible because they don't care. So, All right, the second uh, video I want to show you is uh, at Villa Park, home of Aston Villa up in the uh, Birmingham area. And uh, they uh, had a Premier League game at the time, this several years ago. And Tottenham Hotspur were in town. And again, I looked up and figured out where the away fans sit at Villa Park. Got seats right across the road in uh, the main stand, uh, the Trinity Road stand at Villa Park. Uh, across the way is a few thousand uh, Tottenham fans. Late in the game, it's one-to-one, -one, about the 87th minute. And uh, Tottenham get a uh, free kick right at the top of the penalty area, right in front of their fans, right across the way from me. Uh, I was all over it, got my camera out. And uh, what you're going to notice here, first of all, uh, it's kind of hard to make out, but this free kick takes a big deflection. Uh, that's why the goalkeeper doesn't really make much of an effort to go get it. Uh, the second thing about this video is that that goalkeeper for you Americans uh, is Brad Guzan, now of Atlanta United and uh, I think still the American national goalkeeper for the men's team. Don't know. Anyway, 87th minute at Villa Park and up steps Mr. Harry Kane. Oh, and listen to uh, right before the kick, one of the Villa fans near me yells, concentrate. <laughs>
All right, so both of those videos are uh, from, like, the big time. I mean, you have heard of uh, Sunderland, uh, Manchester United. Uh, you've heard of uh, Tottenham. You've heard of Aston Villa. Um, those are big stadiums, big clubs, etc. Sometimes the magic of these games is that you get a situation where um, – a really, really small club has a really big day, which is kind of what Sunderland was. They're not that small a club. They were in the Premier League at the time, but making the League Cup final and winning at Old Trafford was a major event for them. Sometimes it's a major event just to get there. So in the FA Cup this last uh, year, 2019 to 2020, uh, a little bitty club called Chichester City from way down in the south of England, you know, the kind of club where like the leading scorer also works as a personal trainer in town. I don't know. The goalkeeper is the janitor. Uh, you know, the head coach works at a grocery store. I don't know. But it's a completely amateur club with, you know, an average home attendance of three or four hundred probably. And uh, they got some good draws. They played some good games. They caught a break in the previous round when their opponents literally went out of business and suddenly they find themselves uh, in the third round proper of the FA Cup uh, with a game at Tranmere Rovers. Now, Tranmere Rovers, you might not have heard of. Uh, they are a League One team. That's the third tier of uh, English soccer, uh, which is about six or seven r rungs on the pyramid, I guess, uh, above Tranmere Rovers, above uh, Chichester City. So this is... Not quite David and Goliath. This is more like the kid down the street taking on, uh, you know, the local uh, boxing champion or something. Anyway, it's uh, a tiny little club having a really, really big day. I don't think anybody thought they were going to win. They actually got to halftime nil-nil. Uh, then late in the game, uh, their players started getting tired. One of their defenders made a bad mistake. Tranmere got a goal. And then boom, boom, boom. It was like five to nothing. Um but the Chichester, fan, Chichester fans never stopped singing the whole time. And it became, even where I was sitting among the Tranmere Rovers people, there was almost a sense of like, I wonder if they're going to get a goal. Like, that would be the thing. <laughs> yeah, we got there. That was great. But it would really be nice to score. So, late in the game, corner kick. Good view of the away fans. Goal right in front of them. Here you go. I apologize in advance, by the way, for not getting the ball as it actually goes into the net. I was a little distracted. By the way, my absolute favorite thing about that video, uh, I think, other than just the general mayhem that occurred, is the banana. Did you notice the uh, the big uh, inflatable banana that somebody was tossing around? I don't know. That uh, that game wound up 5-1, I think, and uh, I can still remember a half an hour or more after the game walking away uh, from the stadium there and headed back to the ferry to uh, Liverpool and... Uh, and I could still hear those people singing. <laughs> they were just absolutely going to make the most of the occasion. The stadium was empty. The stewards were cleaning things out. And uh, Chichester fans were still up there singing. So good for them. So, uh, All right, next one uh, occurred at the time uh, in the championship, which was uh, is the uh, second tier of English soccer. And this was a uh, another one of my rules, by the way, uh, one being, you know, try to get a view of the away fans. Another is if you can get to a derby, a rivalry game, do that. So I uh, was aware of the fact that there's two teams in Sheffield, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday. They had not played each other for about five or six years, uh, mainly because uh, Sheffield Wednesday had been in the championship. Sheffield United had been down in League One. 
So they finally clawed their way out of League One, got to the championship. And when I saw that, I'm telling you, the first thing I thought was the Steel City Derby is back on. So it had been six years. It's September of 2017 at Sheffield Wednesday, Hillsboro. And uh, there was no way that I was not going to go to this game. So I actually managed to get a ticket way up in the corner, obviously in the Sheffield Wednesday section. Uh, Sheffield United people were down at the far end of the stadium in the uh, Leppings Lane end. And um, the game was just extraordinary. A lot of times these rivalry games, nobody wants to lose, so nobody wants to make a mistake, and you wind up with these terrible nil-nil affairs. Uh, In this particular case, United scored early on a free kick, went crazy. Ten minutes later, they got another one. It's 2-0. They're going crazy. The Sheffield Wednesday fans are going crazy completely insane, uh, starting to fight with each other. I mean, I thought maybe they were going to tear me apart because I wasn't upset enough. I mean, it was ugly in the Sheffield Wednesday section. And then right at the end of the first half, Wednesday scored. And so it's 2-1 to one going into halftime. And there's, like, renewed hope, but there's also this, like, uh, like, we cannot lose to these guys. Not here. You know, not like this. We can't. So the whole halftime, the place is just buzzing. And then in the second half, Sheffield Wednesday got another goal, and it's 2-2. Two to two. And the place went nuts. I don't think I've ever seen an entire stadium reacting the way that they did when they got it to 2-2. Two, two. So that's when I got my phone out. And I began panning around, and I remember thinking, like, this is what I came for. Like, this is the best, right? So, by the way, what they're singing, uh, uh, you'll hear, you might not be able to make it out, but they're singing, if you don't, I'll sing it, if you don't fucking bounce, if you don't fucking bounce, then you're a blade, and blade being a fan of Sheffield United. So, if you don't fucking bounce, then you're a blade, and they're bouncing, and they're singing, and I got my camera over here aimed at the cop uh, at Sheffield Wednesday, (laughs) and then I noticed that the game was on again, and I said, oh, look, Sheffield United have the ball, and they're headed down the field. Enjoy. That is another video that uh, uh, I think I put that up out on Twitter uh, later that night at my hotel in Sheffield, went to bed, uh, took a train down to London in the morning, checked into a hotel, had some lunch, popped up Twitter, and uh, I was, I don't know, 100, 200 retweets, and I think it had been viewed like 15 or 20,000 times. <laughs> I had an email from a reporter in Sheffield that wanted to put me uh, in the Sheffield Star um, newspaper. I mean, it, that thing blew the hell up. And as you can imagine, Sheffield Wednesday fans don't ever want to think about it again. They wound up losing that game 4-2. to two. Um, But the United fans, they love that video. I still occasionally, it's like one of them finds it for the first time on Twitter and it blows up all over again. Uh, it is great fun. They refer to that uh, years before Sheffield Wednesday had destroyed United on Boxing Day, which they call uh, the Boxing Day Massacre. So this one is what they, the United fans refer to as the Bouncing Day Massacre. <laughs> I remember them singing, you're not fucking bouncing anymore. So, uh, Right, so the last video um, is uh, from another Derby match, uh, also a cup game, uh, one that I was really excited to see. Uh, because a Derby Cup match is what it's all about. Because then it's a big, big game for both teams, and you got a lot of away fans. Here what you got is Everton at Liverpool. 
Uh, this is an FA Cup game, a third round FA Cup, in January of, I think, 2018, I believe. Um, again, it's at Anfield, so normally you'd have 3,000 Everton fans over in the corner. Here you got 9,000 Everton fans filling the entire Anfield road end uh, on both levels. And, uh, you know, Everton, they never beat Liverpool anymore, so it's not the most competitive derby at the time, at the, at the moment, but they really care a lot, and they would love nothing better than to go into Anfield and knock their asses out of the cup. So... Um, at this point in the game, Liverpool have already scored. Uh, they're up 1-0. Um, uh, Liverpool are down uh, attacking the goal in front of the cop, uh, as they tend to do in the second half. So then there's a counterattack, and down they come the other way uh, towards the goal and towards their 9,000 uh, fellow Evertonians. So uh, enjoy. That, uh, that video, by the way, uh, it's hard to pick up on my version, but you might remember this. Um, the BBC or somebody played that video, and somebody in the crowd actually had crutches. I don't know what their story was, but there were crutches, and they were like waving the crutches in the air as they were celebrating. Somewhere in that sea of humanity, they are going completely bonkers. Uh, somebody waving crutches in the air. Uh, unfortunately for them, Liverpool, of course, came back and won. Uh, it was actually Virgil van Dijk's first home game at Anfield, and he headed in the winner in the 87th minute, which was another great crowd reaction film, uh, which I didn't get because I didn't see it coming. I just remember everybody around me jumping up and down and yelling van Dijk. So there's that. So, so there you have it. Those are my five favorite uh, crowd reaction videos. Uh, again, not ranked in any way. Please, Everton fans, don't you know, or Sheffield United fans don't email me and tell me that you should have been number one. There's no, no ranking system here. I love them all. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed them. Um, check out my uh, YouTube channel. I'll make sure there's a link to it down underneath this video. And, uh, in fact, if you're looking at this video, you're looking at my YouTube channel, aren't you? So just, you know, click around, have a good time, check out some of the other stuff, uh, maybe even subscribe, uh, send me some uh, suggestions for other videos you might want to see, etc. Hopefully we get to go back to games soon and I can take some more crowd reaction videos. Uh, but I got um, doing some trivia on here and uh, I'm going to be doing some other video things now that I think I'm figuring out video technology. So uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come see us at EnglishSoccerGuide.com. Um, I can help you get to a game when that happens again. Um, lots of fun things to learn. Uh, I got a book that I wrote. Um, I can do consulting, help you uh, plan your trip. And I got a newsletter that comes out every couple of weeks. So come by, say hello, jump in, and uh, I'll see you at the grounds. <laughs>